Alright everybody, lately I've been going on rants on stream and basically just doing a lot of internal thought about the fact that the left really seems opposed just in every way to the idea of actually winning. Now I know this sounds like sort of a, a sarcastic, rude, like, oh, I'm, I'm sort of saying this as a way of insulting the left, right? Like, oh, it really looks like the left doesn't feel like winning, but the, like, I actually mean this. I really do think that as time goes by, more and more I feel that a lot of people on the left do not have winning, like their actual political opinions and, and prescriptions, succeeding and being the dominant idea in society as one of their even close to top priorities. And that's very frustrating for me. Um, a lot of the behavior that has become endemic on the left, <clears throat> and I think most of you guys at this point will be able to agree, Basically, it's just like, oh, here's a popular left-wing left figure who I can derive a lot of clout and attention from attacking. I'm going to attack them for some perceived slight that is literally non-existent, right? Um, usually, it'll be made up. Usually, it'll be completely, like, in their head. Sometimes, it'll be a misrepresentation or a misunderstanding, but almost always, it is dishonest, and it is very transparently dishonest. I'm talking about the cancellation attempts that a lot of figures on the left will get. For those of you guys that don't know, the current cancellation that Keffels is facing um, is actually very interesting. It's an interesting case study because I've watched as more and more people have fallen for it as time goes on. You see, the very common trend that I will see most often um, is that somebody will attack a lefty figure for something that they think is is like a good way to get at them right so for example a little while ago like a few months ago you would have seen a lot of posts about keffels being racist and be like okay but how is she racist and then if they actually explained how she was racist it would just be the most insane explanation right but keffels is racist nonetheless continuously started to become spouted about over and over and over again and that was the very common like attack that she would get from people on the left right that would happen for a while right and then eventually she responded she responded to the harassment and the hate and the personal attacks and the attempts on her like to destroy her career and her reputation that were happening to her she responded by trolling them and fucking with them and those people took the memes and the trolling seriously, because it's beneficial to do so. For example, um, just today, Keffels posted what is very obviously a meme, saying that she's leaving the left and be going to be doing a why we're leaving the left stream with, with shoe on head. You have to be a fucking idiot to think that's real. Keffels isn't leaving the left, okay? It, it's not real. It's people will will see what they want to see, even if it's a fucking meme, and interpret it as being real, and they'll spread it around. And so that's what happened. And uh, I watched, like, I haven't even been streaming during this time, by the way, like, at least not through most of it. I've just been watching this while recovering from COVID, scrolling through Twitter and like watching this happen in real time. Um, I watched as what was once seen as an insane, psychotic, out of like out of nowhere allegation of Keffels being racist started to become a plausible allegation just because Keffels was responding to those people who were calling her racist in a mean way. All of a sudden, her response to the people going out of their way to call her racist falsely makes her a bad person. It makes her like harassing and, and being a bigot towards trans people of color. That ends up being the, the accusation. And now you have Keffels like responding to those people by trolling them with like, oh, make a pit crew avatar and pretend like you hate me and it'll make it look like, but act really ridiculous. So it's like a, a whole meme, right? It, literally nothing wrong with doing this, by the way. Um, they start calling her racist and saying she's telling her fans to do digital blackface. So now these things that are mostly just responses to these psychos that were just trying to destroy her career with baseless accusations now they're trying to turn her responses to them and their horrible behavior into justification for their initial horrible behavior and as justification for them to continue their horrible behavior and to continue to escalate it 
This all starts with narcissists who want to adopt progressive language, attacking popular figures, and uh, trying to use it as a way of gaining clout and looking holier than thou. This has happened time and time again. I'm not even involved in this drama. I have no skin in this game. Like, the, the drama I'm referring to now, I'm using, an, like, an example that I have no connection to outside of being friends with Kethels, I guess. Um, like, I just watched this unfold, and I watched as people who, when people were initially calling Kethels a racist, who were smart and didn't fall for it, are now falling for it. Because, Ke like, they've been tricked by people who take all of these out-of-context instances of her responding to people trying to destroy her career, and now they've got a narrative that looks a little bit more plausible, and people are falling for it. I saw today that people took a screenshot of Keffel's, like, saying, Hey, there's this person on Twitter who is shitting on me. Do you see, is there anybody who, can anybody find any horrible shit they've said because every person who goes after me for, for something that they perceive as wrong about me has some real dark skeletons in their closet. This isn't doxing and this isn't stalking. It's literally just like, hey, go, go, like, highlight for, like, the N-word in this person's, like, tweets to see if they've been tweeting calling people the N-word a few years ago, because that happens often with these woke scold accounts. And, uh, they tried to say that, uh, she's turning her subreddit into kiwi farms. The reason why I use this as an example is because I think it's important for you guys to get a idea of what it looks like to see a cancel- like, an attempt at destroying someone's career, which is what's happening to Keffels, happen in real time. And that is what a lot of these cancel attempts on popular lefty figures are. Um, I watched as, like, the most mundane shit was turned into the most extreme accusations, accusations that people at the time rightly never fell for, but then she responded to those people, and people suddenly started to pretend like her responding with even a, a quarter of the vitriol or the heat that she was sent her way that she's responding to um, is all of a sudden justification for the bad behavior she received initially. It's very frustrating and a very common tendency I've seen among the left, and it's a problem. Regardless, I didn't mean to go into too much of a tangent about, like, why I think the left is a problem when it comes to canceling, because here what I really want to talk about, one of the biggest flaws the left has, is radicalizing normies. You see, if you want to get any of your ideas across, you have to radicalize the normies, the apolitical grillers, to your political positions. You see, something you realize very quickly as a progressive is that once you become educated on these topics and you know how much injustice exists, it becomes very much impossible to stay silent about that injustice. So when you find out, when you see somebody who is silent about that injustice, who doesn't really seem to care about politics or doesn't really want to get into it, it doesn't really live in the discourse, you start to assume one of two things. Either they're heavily uneducated and they, they aren't un informed on what's going on, or they are and they are purposefully, for some reason, not speaking out. This is a false assumption. A lot of the time, there are a third group of people who just haven't been informed enough on what- on the fundamentals of these issues, and it is not their fault. But if it- if they did know, they would care. And the problem is the right is very good at getting these people to care about the things the right cares about, no matter how insignificant. And the left is not very good at getting these normies to care about what the left cares about, which is typically pretty, ins like, actually significant, you know? The left doesn't care about, ju like, educating people, typically. It cares about judging those who are uneducated. And I think this is a big problem. However, this video by Innuendo Studios, and I do have my problems with Innuendo Studios. I, I don't think he likes me. I think he's, like, specifically said he doesn't like Debate Bros streamers. But regardless of that, I really like this video. And I think it does a good job of highlighting how the right radicalizes normies. Now, this video uh, came out all the way back in October 2019, which is around when I started doing YouTube. It was the year that I started streaming. And um, this video feels like such a, like, everybody's seen this video, right? Like, everybody knows this video. Um, that's kind of what I assumed. But I mentioned it a few times on stream, and a bunch of people didn't know what I was referencing. And I realized this video is as old as my YouTube uh, uh, political career, almost. It's a little younger, but, like, it's almost as old as my YouTube political career, and most of my subscribers have not watched me or even been a part of the left that long. 
Not to mention, people who have seen it probably haven't seen it in a while, so I figured, let's brush up on a little homework. You know, I, I talk a lot about how, uh, you know, video essayists are assholes, and they do tend to be assholes, but in an ideal world, us debate bro streamers would be able to just learn from the video essayist content, and it would be... That would be the end of it. It would be a very mutually beneficial cycle. Um, but that is not the world we live in. Regardless, let's get a taste of that hypothetical world by watching the alt-right playbook, How to Radicalize a Normie. This video should be required watching for all lefties. Say for all the right. sake of argument, your friend Gabe is starting to worry you. Gabe's always been just, you know, a, a regular guy, not very political. He likes video games, sci-fi, comics, Star Wars, and anime. White guy shit. The only offbeat thing about him is you- Whoa, hold on. Whole lot of black people love anime. Let's be clear- to be clear, whole lot of black people in America love anime. You suspect there's like a 20% chance he's a- Like, to, to be clear, the, the, anima the anime fans who are black are the very few anime fans that don't suss me out as the possibility that they're pedophiles. I am I the only one who, who, who like, has that same feeling? Like, when I meet some, like, 23-year-old white dude who watches anime, I'm like, So how do you feel about lollies? You know, how do you feel about lollies? Wow, the racism? Yeah, maybe. I am racist against white people. Yeah, all white people are pedophiles. I'm sorry. If you watch anime and you're white, you're a pedophile. It's just how it is. No, but in all seriousness, I, I don't know. It just, it, it feels like most anime fans who are, who are pedos tend to be white dudes. That's all I'm saying, okay? It just tends to be pasty fucking white dudes in their 30s or their, like, late 20s. The furry? For all intents and purposes, Gabe is a normie. And then, so, yeah, oh, yeah, white women too. Then the second, the second tier of, like, how many anime pedophiles are there is white women. Then there's a bunch of white women who like anime that are pedos as well. That's also common. But recently, Gabe's been spending a lot of time on some radically conservative forums and listening to radically conservative podcasts and picking some radically conservative arguments with you and your friends. You never would have expected this, not from Gabe. And given the speed it's happened, it's worrying to think where it might be headed. How have the alt-right gotten their hooks into your friend? How? If you've ever known a Gabe, this video's for you. Here's how to radicalize a normie. Step one, identify the audience. What you need to know before we begin is around 2013, the Nazis went online. Hate groups in the U.S. as tracked by the Southern Poverty Law Center had been- So, he's somewhat wrong here. It was way earlier than 2013. What actually happened in 2013 and 2014, well, it was more in the 2015 area, was that- Breitbart, uh, the, the head guy at Breitbart, what was his name, Steve Bannon, who ended up being Trump's campaign advisor, literally took it upon himself and, like, started an initiative to push right-wing politics in the gaming community. He saw gamers and the gaming community overall as a massive business opportunity. He even st um, ended up having a stake in an illegal Chinese gold farming ring for WoW. Like in WoW, there's a lot of uh, gold farming rings in China where the like gold farmers will like sell gold illegally. And um, uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, what's his name? Steve Bannon had a, a stake in that. Steve Bannon and the Trump administration saw so much potential in radicalizing the gaming uh, the gaming community, and not only radicalizing them politically, they didn't just see political benefit, but mon monetary and like business benefits they could get just from marketing themselves politically towards gamers. Been growing in number since the knots, but between 2012 and 2014, they dropped by almost a quarter. Patriot groups dropped by over a third. However, hate crimes stayed about the same. Radical conservatism was not shrinking, but decentralizing. Still radical and still often violent, but now full of white nationalist nomads unlikely to join a formal organization. This didn't make them harmless. What it did was protect their asses from the typical hate group cycle of getting the public's attention, making allies in conservative media, swelling their numbers, and then eventually disgracing themselves with failures in fighting and, often enough, members committing horrific acts of violence. Which this is something that a lot of the left is, has a very hard time grasping, is that for, for so much of our upbringing, what we think of when we think hate group is the KKK or the Nazis, like goose-stepping, uniform-wearing, swastika, swastika tattoo, card, literally card-carrying Nazis, okay? That is what we imagine so much. That's what we see so much when we're in our upbringing when we think hate group or hateful person. And so when the age of the internet hit, 
and we all got online, I think a lot of us, and I'm speaking about myself and those that are radicalized, like by far right people online. Are there subtitles? I think I can turn those on. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people who are radicalized online, they had a very false representation of what hate looks like. A very over-exaggerated, cartoonish version of what hate looks like. And so when somebody like, for example, Lauren Southern came along with the Great Replacement theory, Conspiracy Theory, um, all of a sudden, you know, so, so a pretty white girl telling you that, you know, oh, I'm not hateful, I'm not racist, I just, I have concerns about um, the statistical decrease in white birth rates and, and immigration causing, it's like, oh, okay, well, this isn't like a, some, this isn't some, like, grody, red, right-wing, redneck, swastika tattoo, uh, uh, you know, sheet over his head guy uh, screaming see Kyle and, and all that shit. This is completely different. And so a lot of young people have absolutely no fucking idea what an actual bigot looks like when they get online and start getting exposed to political stuff. And so you have to realize that a lot of people, a lot of those kids who got online uh, around that time, they're grown up now. What people who are like 16, 17, 15, 14, when I was uh, getting radicalized to the right during the Gamergate era, are now adults. I'm 23. So they're now adults online with platforms. They vote. They have a voice. They aren't just kids anymore. And those same people, a lot of them, never got bread pilled. They, they didn't get bread pilled. They didn't get that, reali that false reality shattered at any point. And... Now it's not just a bunch of kids online uh, pushing right-wing politics like it was during the 2015-2016 Gamergate era, which it mostly was teenagers pushing the, the right-wing politics back then. Now it's a lot more young adult-aged people doing it. A lot more, like, 20-somethings are right-wing now online than was the case back in, the, in, in 2016 in the Gamergate era, where it was mostly teenagers and boomers. They aren't centralized groups anymore. It's like the, the right and, and neo-Nazism and hate as a concept has to decentralize and exist online and be spread um, stochastically. Uh, you, can't, you can't be the leader of a hate movement now and have any ties that lead back to you. So now they make YouTube channels or they make Telegram channels, and I guess now if they really get banned, or they, they, they go on Twitch, or they go on TikTok, and they radicalize an audience, and they rely on that audience, or at least some people in that audience, to eventually take up arms and do what they're pushing for. Which come with social and sometimes legal consequences for all the other members. So the alt-right and their fellow travelers these days don't so much have members. They have hashtags, followers, viewers, and subscribers. Yep. This insulates them from their own audience. If Gabe, as a member of that audience, were to go out and commit a crime on their behalf, there'd be little doubt they had a hand in radicalizing him, but it'd be very hard to claim they told him to do it. Exactly. That's why even when the Christchurch shooter, the Christchurch shooter, after killing, like, I think it was 51 innocent people in a, in a, um, in a mosque in Christchurch, New Zealand, um, he, he murdered them. He live-streamed it. He live-streamed his mass murder, and he'd also posted a manifesto. Um, and the manifesto is probably still available online if you guys want to try to find it. Do you know what that manifesto was called? The name of the manifesto was The Great Replacement. You have to understand that this type of hate that leads to violence, it's the people who are pushing it. They're, they've got big platforms. They're on YouTube. They're on Twitter. On some of these sites where Gabe spends hours and hours of his day, he's he live streamed it. Oh my God. This is why we need to watch this video. This video was released a year after the Christchurch shooting, roughly. I, we needed to watch, we needed to watch this video today. So many of you guys in chat needed to see this video because this is important knowledge. This is the, 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 the background, the context that this era of internet politics gives, I think is very important. He's never created an account or left a comment. The people radicalizing him don't even know he's there. This distributed nature is what makes the alt-right and the movements connected to it unique. You may remember a notable proof of concept for this strategy. Doing almost everything online has, as compared with traditional hate movements, dramatically increased their reach and inoculated yep. them from consequence. The trade-off is a lack of control. And How many times have you seen a drama YouTuber or a commentary YouTuber who clearly just wants to be edgy in their videos defend 
like outright Nazis being allowed on YouTube, like even if they 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 are radicalizing people because they're free speech absolutists and they don't want to have their free speech taken away to say the N word or whatever or to be edgy or to do whatever they want. So many normie, non-right wing, just edgelord YouTubers I have seen, like Turkey Tom and, and, and all that, like, they are literally free speech absolutists. Like, even Nazis who are, who are actively and provably inspiring terror attacks should be allowed to have YouTube platforms because they don't want to, they think that any type of speech restriction is a slippery slope. They, that's a propaganda point pushed by the right. That is inescapable in online culture. The idea that any form of censorship is a slippery slope to complete and utter, like, devastation of all speech. That is a right-wing propaganda point that is inescapable online. It has become a basically inescapable internet truth at this point. And it's not the truth. It's one of the ways the right has dominated internet culture. That's basically Shuan Head's position. Well, Shuan Head is not on the left. Her boyfriend's a Nazi. I think um, she recently uh, went to, like, some... She privately went to, like, a far-right, uh, uh, like, media event or something like that, where, like, it's a small event, by the way, held by a small group. It was very clearly, like, something she had to, like... It's, it's yeah, it's, like, some... I, I think the group has, like, a, a, a moose as their logo, and they like all their tweets are about how they will defeat the trans agenda and they will defeat the gender nonsense being taught to kids or whatever. But yeah, yeah, she's not left wing. And so we come to Gabe. Gabe exists at the intersection of the kinds of people the alt-right is looking for, straight white cis men who feel emasculated by modern society, primarily, though they do make exceptions, and the kinds of people who are vulnerable to recruitment. Gabe fits the first profile in that he got bullied in high school and often feels he has to hide his nerdy side for fear of getting ridiculed. The alt-right also has success with men who can't- A lot of- yeah. Yeah, a lot of, um, they won't admit it, because you have to understand that the right teaches narcissism as a way of sort of bolstering your self-esteem. So a lot of them won't admit it, but most of these right-wing dudes were not powerful people when they were younger. Um, a lot of these young guys who end up falling into the Andrew Tate shit, as we now know, is like the more popular thing now, uh, the Tate brothers. But back then it was like the M like MGTOW incel community at large. The people who fall into this are usually dudes who were bullied for having nerdy interests like gaming. And they have a very strong identity tied to their nerdy interests, whether it be Marvel movies, comic books, gaming, whatever. And they think the left is on the offensive, attacking what they enjoy. They've been told by right-wing propagandists online that the left is attacking what they love and enjoy get laid, or recently got divorced, or feel anxious about an influx of non-white people in their community. These things can make one feel like less than the confident white man they are supposed to be. Supposed and to it's be. the closest they will ever come to being minoritized. Regarding the second profile, it's Ooh. important to know that Gabe is not- I forgot. Very good point. Very good point that uh, they make here. A lot of young white dudes who are straight and cis, like in my case, grow up being told a lot. And I know this sounds like, you know, a right-wing talking point, but it's true. Grow up being told a lot that they are privileged and that in some cases they may be led to feel like they are bad simply for having that privilege. I can tell you, I can confirm to you, as a young guy, as a, as a teenage boy, there were many points where left-wing advocacy that I was hearing made me feel bad for being a man. It felt like I was supposed to feel ashamed that I was born a man and without any choice uh, it was, have been given the privileges of, of being a man. Lucky Otter says their mom was really bad with this. Mine too. Trust me. Um, yeah, and so for a lot of young people, a lot of young cis straight dudes, and a lot of them won't end up being cis or straight in the long run. To be fair, a lot of these guys end up realizing they're trans or they're gay or they're bi or anything along those lines later in life. But in many cases, in most cases, they feel as though they're nonstop getting shit talked for this perceived privilege they have. And they don't see the privilege. Like, I didn't, I couldn't see the privilege. You have to be older and you have to have a lot of real life experience and a lot of just seeing shit to realize the privilege. You have to, like, see the lack of privilege in other, like, in other people and their experiences before you can realize what you have. 
You know what I mean? And so in my case, it took just not being a weirdo incel anymore and making friends with women that were completely platonic and just hanging out with them and talking to them and learning about their lives where I realized, ah, shit, huh? Yeah, being a woman does kind of suck in a lot of cases, you know? Being gay does suck in a lot of cases. It really does kind of suck to be gay or a woman or to be POC and to, like, not really see yourself reflected or people who look like you reflected in the media you consume. Like, every video game that comes out, like, the main character is, like, a straight white guy with brown hair. Like, it's just, you don't really... Uh, these are just realizations that you make the more exposure you get. To these groups and the more exposure you get to the arguments the more you think about it the more that wall of propaganda that's been built up gets shattered and you just start to think on stuff you mull it over but the most important thing to realize is that a lot of these young guys feel oppressed they actually feel oppressed because of all of this and despite all of that despite feeling oppressed they are constantly told they have it better than everybody else. And you know what? The truth is they are oppressed. We are all oppressed under some mechanism or another. Even cis straight white men are victims of the system to some degree, even if they have it less bad than other groups. So everybody has it tough. And these guys are being told that they have it better than everyone else. And they're not seeing it. They don't have the, the worldly experience or age or wisdom to see it or the education to see it. I mean, the Republicans will make sure they don't get the education to see it. And, uh, they, yeah, neurodivergence as well. Um, yeah, and, and they see, they feel like absolute shit. They feel like the only person who cares about them is the right. Not categorically different from you or me. He's Do you guys know Dream stole his character model? It's a very basic, it does look a little bit like Dream's thing, but it's very basic. It's literally, like... You, this is, you cannot claim that anybody has copyright on this art style. I'm sorry. It, we, we, there, are, when you can literally make a basic character in this art style in four pen strokes, maybe five, that it's not like, whoop, 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 doot, doot, doot. There you go. That, that is, you, you can't copyright that, that art style. Is a cishet white dude. His problems are not unique. There's not a ton of research into the demography of the alt-right, but there may be a higher than average chance Gabe has a history of being abused or comes from a broken home. You don't know if that's true of Gabe, he's never said. But most abuse survivors don't become Nazis. The things true. that make people like Gabe recruitable tend to be situational. It happens often during periods of transition, as dramatic as the death of a loved one, or as benign as moving to a new city. Things that make people ask big life questions. Gabe has concerns like economic precarity, a lot of it will be like, oh, you're a teenager and you're depressed. What are you going to do? Spend a lot of time on YouTube watching YouTube videos. Probably playing a lot of video games and watching YouTube locked up in your room. That's a lot of what teenagers do when they're depressed. And, and guess what? Teenagers in depression? Like two peas in a pod. So yeah, it's going to lead to a lot of this shit. Not knowing his place in a changing world. Stressful working conditions. In other words... Gabe is suffering under late capitalism, same as everyone, and it's entirely plausible he could have gone down the path to becoming a leftist. Now, this is not to make an economic anxiety argument. The animating force of the far right is and always has been bigotry. But the alt-right... This is true. It is very important. Yep, I hated my parents and they made me feel awful, so I hung out in my room 24-7 on the internet. Yep, it's very common. Um, in this case, I, it is very important to know... In most cases, it is not the fact that, like, everybody's having a hard time getting the bills paid that is radicalizing people to the alt-right. Most alt-righters are not people who are like, wait, what do you mean I, I, like, I can't pay my bills and my wages are low? Oh, you're telling me it's because of immigration? Ah, all right, well, time to carry some tiki torches and chant Jews will not replace us at the Charlottesville rally. That's not how that goes. That's not what most Nazis, that's not the journey most Nazis are taking. However... The state of late-stage capitalism leaves pretty much everybody depressed and not knowing what to do. And that, that is a prime uh, suspect for recruitment to the far right. Targets Gabe by treating his economic anxiety as one of many things bigotry can be sold as a solution to. It is their aim that when dissatisfied white men go looking for answers, they find the alt-right before they find us. Never has it been better put. That is their whole goal. 
when this guy goes on the internet, their goal is that they fi- that this that Gabe fi- finds alt right content creators, far right or even middling right wing content creators and propagandists before they find us. Because guess what? Most people don't go from left or progressive to the right. It's not very common. Most people who are like on the right and claim to have been on the left, you you go digging and you find out, wait, they never were on the left. Did Hey, hey, you know Carlin Borisenko, possibly the most popular le- leaving the left person out there? We recently did a video where it turns out she was dating for years and years and years, was dating a pedophile, a convicted pedophile while he was in prison. She was his prison pen pal, prison girlfriend, like pen pal thing, and was like excitedly waiting for him to get out of prison. They got together when he got out of prison for child molestation, multiple charges of it. Um, She's very well aware of this and defended it and was absolutely right wing back then as well. (laughs) Like people dug into her history and it is not good. So like these, these people who claim to have been on the left and then moved to the right, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. Once they get to us, they get it. Like, things make sense. They understand the reality of of the situation. And the right's propaganda has a very hard time creeping back in from there. It's, It's not very common. The right needs the Gabes of the world to find them before they find us. It's why it's so frustrating to me. The left seems dead set on making sure no lefty figures of any import are out there for Gabe to find. You know why I started this segment with the rant about the Keffels cancellation, right? It's because from the start, these woke scolds have wanted to destroy her career. And everything they use as justification from this point on is nothing but them trying to backwards justify the insane shit that made them decide they wanted to destroy Keffels like a year back, right? They want to destroy her. And regardless of what their their goal is, all it will mean is one less left one less left wing voice that maybe this Gabe stumbles across before he finds a Nazi. I'm sorry, but in the game of the internet, winning the culture war, and yep, it's a culture war, and it's real, and it matters. I I hate to say it; it makes me makes my fucking stomach churn to say this, but the culture war matters. The culture war matters, it does. And to actually win a culture war, you need voices, you need views, you need hype, you need noise. Does all of this make sense so far, chat? Hypers, if this makes sense to you. Step two, establish a community. Were Gabe pledging an old school hate movement, there would probably be a recruiter to usher him into an existing community. But that's the kind of formalized interaction modern extremists tend to avoid. Oh yeah, if you're watching right now and you want to support and you want to do it for for, complete, for completely free, consider hitting the like button over on YouTube. It actually forces YouTube to push my stream to more people. So just hit that thumbs up and it helps me out a lot. I really do appreciate it. You can even do it on mobile. You can do it on, I think you can even do it on, uh, on like a TV, like a smart TV as well. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Online extremism has many points of entry. Step two, establish a community. Were Gabe pledging an old-school hate movement, there would probably be a recruiter to usher him into an existing community. But that's the kind of formalized interaction modern extremists tend to avoid. Online extremism has many points of entry and everybody's journey is unique, so rather than be comprehensive, we will- It's why it's so hard to advocate and talk about the alt-right pipeline and its existence as a left-wing figure. Everyone's story is different. And the pipeline necessarily has to- morph and change constantly creators are getting banned creators are made irrelevant creators are are just falling off on their own accord or getting lost in drama and become like hated by that same community all the time new figures pop up and get astroturfed onto the platform two years ago nobody knew who brett cooper was now she's one of the largest right-wing voices on youtube because the daily wire paid for her to have a large platform she signed a big contract and now she's the The hot e-girl that talks about right-wing politics in a Daily Wire office made to look like it's her bedroom so she has some personability to the audience. It's all astroturf. It's all paid for by billionaires doing this to preserve their own best interests. I don't know who Brett Cooper is. Oh, no. We'll have to cover pretty soon then. Focus on what are, in my estimation, the two most common pathways. The far right creates a community Gabe is likely to stumble into, or infiltrates a community Gabe is already in. The stumble upon method has two main branches, one of which is just Gabe ends up on a Chan board, which we've already done a video about. 
The Whoa. other is kind of the polar opposite of 4chan's cult of anonymity. Gabe ends up in the fandom of a far-right thought leader. This is the most common path to the far right, by far. Many of these people who end up getting into this shit will find themselves getting into this shit when they find this is all that they can be involved in. 4chan has such a bad layout. I really couldn't tell you. I don't spend a lot of time on 4chan. Ironically enough, the, the only times I've gone to 4chan were for non-political reasons. There was like a, a leak for a game that I was excited on, like excited for like years ago. I think it was an Assassin's Creed game that leaked on 4chan. I looked at that. It's mostly like game leaks. If there's ever like a game leak that happens on 4chan that looks really credible, like it looks real, then that's usually what I'll go to 4chan for. But besides that, I don't even go there to see the crazy political shit. Every green text I've seen was posted on Twitter from 4chan or on Reddit. These folks are charismatic media personalities. That's charismatic according to Gabe's tastes, not ours. I don't understand it either. And these personalities may gain traction on any number of platforms, from podcasts to reported. I think this is actually a very good layout of figures to show because these far-right influencers all push their ideas through different means, right? You see, Steven Crowder uses the sort of vague guise of a comedian for his pushing of hate and, and his grift, right? Um, uh, 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 Jordan Peterson uses the guise of an intellectual. He looks like he's some sort of like, he pre pretends to be like a professor explaining to you uh, why wokeness is destroying all modern culture and science. And, and here's a very academic look, right? Sargon of Akkad is like a, a culture gamer bro dude who uses a British accent to sound smart and like he knows what he's talking about. He's like the, the king of the, of the septic community as we'll say. And then you've got Paul Joseph Watson, who takes the perspective of this, like, comedic uh, news guy who's just giving you the news and what's going on, but it's very clearly just right-wing propaganda bending whatever, you know, current, quote-unquote, because he'll just dig up old stories, too. Current, quote-unquote, story he's talking about. Um, all of these figures take a completely different path to pushing the same right-wing propaganda to people, and they're all paid a lot of money to do it to blogging, though the most effective platform for red billing is, and yes I am biting the hand that feeds me, YouTube. They may get Gabe's attention through fairly conventional means, like talking about or even generating controversy to get themselves trending, while some of the more committed will employ dubious SEO tactics like clickbait, Google bombing, and data voids. But what they tend to have in common, especially the most accessible ones, is that they don't present themselves as entry points to the radical right. In fact, many did not set out to be far-right thought leaders and may not think of themselves as such. Though yep. they are often selling products, of which the alt-right are among their biggest purchasers, and it's not like they're turning the money away. So there's that. How they present is the same way anyone presents who wants to be successful on social media. Accessible. Approachable. Authentic. The face-to-face -face relationship a budding extremist forms with their recruiter or the leader of their hate group's local chapter are here folded into one parasocial relationship with a complete stranger. Why this person appeals to Gabe is they're not selling politics as politics, but conservatism as a kind of lifestyle brand. They were Does that sound familiar to you guys? Can we, can we think of anybody who's gained massive amounts of popularity recently who literally sells conservatism as a lifestyle brand? Thank you, Holic Master. You're dead on the money. Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate has to be possibly the best shining example of somebody who used conservatism as a lifestyle brand to push conservatism it's not a set of political beliefs but it's a lifestyle it's who you are rely heavily on critiquing or ridiculing the left feminists are oversensitive black people unintelligent queer folks doomed to loneliness and trans people insane and i don't know if it's a you know it's really crazy that th these are the positions that were popular back then um because they've escalated in their severity in some ways thunderfoot has literally left the right and just makes science videos now. He literally just debunks Elon Musk and other, like, pseudoscience stuff now. He's based. Um, this guy is a nobody anymore. You could just replace this guy with Andrew Tate. Ben Shapiro calls all trans people groomers and pedophiles now, and, so does, and trans so does Blair White. Like, like, Blair White just calls trans people groomers and pedos now. So, we're, like, it's gotten even more hateful. People insane. 
And I don't know if it's a coincidence that these are all things Gabe thinks. Back then, all they would say about trans people, like the worst they'd say about adult trans people is they're they're insane or they're like mentally ill and they're like lost. Now it's all trans people who are adults are like pedos who are pushing it on kids and destroying society. That uh, back then they'd say, yeah, you just don't trans the kids. If you're an adult, though, you can be trans. Who cares? Now they want to go after the trans adults, and they always want to go after the trans adults. Every seemingly, like, giving of ground that these people do to the left is always just them masking what they truly want to be exposed later. All of these people, whether they realize it or not, are working towards the end goal of fascism. Thinks about himself in his low moments. By contrast, they don't sell conservatism as having sounder policies or a more coherent moral framework, but that abandoning progressive principles and embracing conservative ones will make Gabe happier. Remember, Gabe isn't looking for white nationalism or misogyny. What he wants is the cure to his soul sickness. And these friendly micro-celebs are here to offer a shot of life advice with politics as the chaser. It is it's wild that Vosh said basically exactly this, that, like, the left needs to reach out to men more and needs to, like, realize the right has their claws in them and, and we need to do something about it, and, like, got death threats for it. <laughs> like, like Va Vosh said basically exactly this point and got death threats for it. The video essayist versus debate bro streamer bias is very real extremely important that politics be presented as a set of affects, not a set of beliefs. The second pathway is infiltration, which is its own beast. Media personalities sometimes become gateways to the right almost by accident. They do something edgy, a part of their audience reacts positively, and... Remember, we were talking about this earlier today. I'm actually watching as this happens in Asmongold's community in real time. I'm a big fan of Asmongold because I'm a WoW player, and I'm watching as because this one uh, right-wing, like, quartering-style grift YouTuber started dick-riding Asmongold after Asmongold got shit for playing Hogwarts Legacy. Now uh, Asmongold is regularly reacting to Yellow Flash videos. Yellow Flash, the guy who got pissed about Sony making a tweet about there being female demons in Doom Eternal. The, the guy who literally uploads like four videos a day with literal copy, it's literally copy pasted the quartering thumbnails, by the way, like literally just quartering videos without the guy in the corner talking. Um, and now Asmongold's reacting to the guy's videos on stream and shouting the guy out and he's getting tons of subscribers. What you're about to see talked about is happening to Asmongold's community in real time. Pathway is infiltration which is its own beast. Media personalities sometimes become gateways to the right almost by accident. They do something edgy, a part of their audience reacts positively, and facing no real consequence, they do it more. This leads to further positive reinforcement from conservative fans, the rest of the audience acclimates, and the cycle repeats, the personality pushing the envelope further and further based on what flies with their increasingly conservative audience. It's happening in real time. I'm watching the beginning of it happen to a community that I'm actively in and enjoy. It's sad to see, but there's not really anything I can do about it, I guess. In this way, they become a right-wing figure by both radicalizing and being radicalized by their audience. Infiltration is deliberate. The far right will reliably target any community that has, one, a large white male population, two, whose niche interests allow them to feel vaguely marginalized, and three, I will say, one thing that this video doesn't do very well is speak to the audience that it's act that it's talking about. If a Gabe stumbled across this video and watched it, he'd probably feel pretty condescended to, right? Like, the video's pretty condescending. This is very much a video for leftists. I think as far as, like, leftists, this is a video you should watch. Because it does a very good job of explaining a, a journey that I think many lefties haven't been on themselves. I don't think most lefties have once been conservative. I was, and I think a lot of you have been. And it's sad that so many once conservative lefties are not not only completely left out of the conversation, but demonized. And the sad part of that is, I personally think that people who are once right-wing and are now left-wing should honestly be seen as more trustworthy than people who are always left-wing. You know, we people who were once right-wing have seen all the arguments and all the propaganda and all of what the right has to offer to radicalize someone and then got out of it, realized all of it was wrong, figured out that all of it was incorrect, and then changed our positions because we realized all of the best the right had to throw at us to radicalize us wasn't correct. And now we know the actual truth. And we know all of the right's games, all of its tricks, all of its little you know, methods of radicalizing people dishonestly. We know it. 
and it doesn't work on us and it doesn't work on the people that we explain it to. At least I would hope, right? You know, I, I hope I have that effect. Who are not used to progressive critique of said interest. This isn't to say progressive critique doesn't exist or hasn't been baked into the property from the beginning, but that it has been so far easy for white guys to ignore. As True. such, progressives within that community probably don't talk politics much. And women and minorities are perfectly welcome to post, same as anyone, but just, you know, don't, don't make identity politics, you know, like, a thing. Given Gabe's proclivities, he's probably already in a number of fan communities where he can geek out and not get teased. How many times have you seen someone in a political seeming community get shit just for making any somewhat woke sounding reference to their identity? Like, how many times have you seen somebody in like a Discord server that's like an apolitical Discord server mention their trans and then just get shit for mentioning that? Like, okay, you, you got to bring that up. Do you got to talk about that? Like, we don't really care. Like, why well, you got to bring it up, you know? Or even just having some level of, of even mild bigotry thrown your way in response to that, right? Who's seen that happen? I've seen it happen. I've seen that happen to people. It's real. And... It's very common in communities that are pretty much apolitical to see mentioning the existence of or, or just kind of bringing up the identity of a marginalized group as a political topic, as you're, you're making things political. And making things political is bad. Eased. And this is where the far right will go looking for him. Communities are at their most vulnerable to infiltration at times of political discord. This can happen naturally, say, a new property in the fandom has a black protagonist, or it can be provoked, say, a bunch of channers join the forum and say provocative things about race to get people arguing, or both. Left to its own devices, the community might sort out its differences and maybe even come out more progressive than they started. But with the right pressure applied in the right moment, these communities can devolve into arguments about the need to remove a nebulously defined politics from the conversation. The adage yep. about bros on the internet is political means anything I disagree with. But it would be more accurate to say here, political means anything on which the community disagrees. For instance, Nazis are bad is an apolitical statement because everyone in the community agrees. It's common sense and therefore neutral. But par That is not the case anymore. Back then, when, when you know, this video was made, on the internet, Nazis were bad. Like, if you could prove somebody was a Nazi... They were done back in like 2019 in that era, 2019, 2020. Like Nazis were seen like conceptually as bad enough that if you could prove someone as a Nazi, they were done. But now we've got Kanye. So Nazis are bad is no longer an apolitical statement because that's a debatable statement now in our political culture. Online, if you go and you tweet Nazis are bad, you will get people with graper avatars with lots of likes in their posts replying cringe L uh, Jew, stuff like that. And they will have lots of likes in their posts. Nazis are bad is no longer an apolitical statement. It was much more of an apolitical statement back then. It was much less up for debate. And yes, I'm sad to say, Nazis are bad in 2023 is a topic online that is much more up for debate than it was in 2019, or 2019. Paradoxically, so. Nazis are good is also apolitical. Because Nazis are bad is the consensus, Nazis are good must just be an edgy joke. And even if not, the community already believes the opposite, so the statement is harmless. Somehow this has not become, this has not had the opposite effect. Nazis are good has not become more of a political statement, uh, as Nazis are bad has become more of a political statement, because, uh, like, now it's still seen as just an edgy joke. We've got people who will literally outright say, I am a Nazi, I like Hitler. Like, they'll outright say it, clip me there. Um, they'll outright say it, and they'll be very clear, and, and it'll be obvious that they are not joking. Like, K Kanye, for example. We'll use Kanye West as an example. Kanye West is clearly not joking. I still see random normies online saying Kanye is joking, and that he's just being edgy. I, I see tons of random normies online who still think Kanye is being edgy and joking. So not only has Nazis are bad become a political statement up for debate, but Nazis are good is now seen as a joke not worth taking seriously. Even more so than back then. Tolerable. However, feminism is good is a political statement because the community hasn't reached a consensus. It's debatable and therefore political, and you should stop talking about it. And making Hold on, let me rewind, because this is a really good point. I don't want to interrupt. Inter uh, 
the community already believes the opposite, so the statement is harmless, tolerable. However, feminism is good is a political statement because the community hasn't reached a consensus. It is debatable and therefore political, and you should stop talking about it. And me That is the key here. Communities that like to make themselves out to be apolitical, very, very, very often, they will attack those that bring up their marginalized identity as a member of the community because the validity of that marginalized identity or the acceptance of that marginalized identity is debatable in that community, and that will start a political argument. And so your existence in that community is starting drama. How many of you have seen that? I've seen it a lot. Making political arguments, no matter how rational, is having an agenda, and having an agenda is ruining the community. Now, it is curious how the things that provoke the most disagreement tend to be whichever ones make white dudes uncomfortable. One of life's great unanswerable mysteries. Well, yeah, obviously. Most of the people who... Most of the, like, standards that are set in these communities as to what is normal, what is making things political, is what our society considers to be normal and okay, which is usually the... I'm going to say some lefty buzzwords here. The cis-heterosexual normative white culture that we live in. You can gather where this is going. A community that doesn't tolerate progressivism, but does tolerate Nazism, is going to start collecting Nazis. Nazis whose goal is to drive a wedge between the community and the left. Once the left acknowledges, hey, your community's developing a Nazi problem, the Nazis, who are, remember, trusted apolitical members of the community who might just be kidding about all the Nazi shit, say, did you hear that, guys? Those cultural Marxists just called all of us Nazis. Wedge. There it is. There... It is. When? What recent event happened in online culture that caused exactly this to happen? It's Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy came out, and a whole bunch of right-wing figures were able to virtue signal about how bad the left is for attacking streamers and other people playing Hogwarts Legacy. And there were lefties calling, like, bullying streamers and harassing streamers for playing Hogwarts Legacy. They were able to virtue signal about how bad the left is for that, and they were able to stick a wedge in the community. Where a whole bunch of apolitical, normie people now are more prone to take the right side in any given cultural talking point or, or debate. Just because of this whole thing being their introduction to trans politics and trans activism. Similarly, any community members who say, but Nazis, though, are framed as infiltrators pushing an agenda, even if they've been there longer than the Nazis have. They get the wedge, too. This yep. is how fandoms radicalize. They are built as, yeah, I'll say it, safe spaces for nerds, weebs, and furries, and are told that the left is a threat to their safety. I do love that furries is included in there. That's pretty funny. I like that a lot. And given a choice between leaving a community that has mattered to him for years and simply adjusting to the community's shifting politics, the assumption is that Gabe will stay. This assumption is right often enough that a lot of fandoms have been colonized. What is true of both these methods, Gabe finding the right or the right finding him, is that Gabe does not come nor stay for the ideology. He's here for the community, the sense of being with his people, of having his fears validated and his enjoyment shared. The ideology is simply the price of admission. Step 3. Isolate. There is a vast, interconnected network of far-right communities out there, and Gabe is, at this point, only- This video is phenomenal, you're right about that. It does a very good job of breaking down all of this. There's not much I wanted to add there, but this next point is very important, because this is the next step in a community getting radicalized, and, and sort of where the left loses its ability to have any chance, any chance of pulling people out from the right. ...on the periphery. In order to keep him in, they need to disrupt his relationships to other communities and become more and more his primary online social space. Having made this space hostile to the left, they now seek to break his connections to progressives elsewhere in his life. This is hard to do online. The whole appeal of moving radicalism to the internet is that your away from keyboard life doesn't have to change. You are crypto the moment you log off. Some thought leaders will encourage their audience to cut ties with family of origin, or defu, but even then, they can't monitor whether the audience has actually done it in the way an in-person movement could. And so alienating Gabe from the left is less controlled, and consequently, maybe less total. That is true. 
completely be like the way that these online hate movements are able to disconnect you from all of your like real life connections and familial friendships and everything like that is a lot less absolute they can't excommunicate you they can't spy like in some cases they might spy on you and stalk you but like that's not very common right and so all they have to do is convince their recruits to disconnect to defu themselves and that's far more effective because it's not some jackbooted uh, authoritarian telling them that you can't uh, be friends with people who are black. You can't be friends with people who are gay. It's propagandists telling you why you shouldn't be friends with those groups and you being brainwashed into thinking you're making the decision yourself. That is what is so important about this propaganda. They're brainwashing people into thinking they're actively choosing to make to, to believe these things, but they're not. They're having a, essentially reality warped out from under them. It's not help. It, it definitely doesn't help that the Republicans have fought so long and hard and successfully to gut American education. And I am mostly speaking about America. That that's the experience I have. Um, have gutted America, American education, public education to the extent that like most kids aren't even taught a thorough understanding of evolution in a lot of states because of how right wing the control of the education is and how much control right-wing teachers have over their curriculum in younger grades it's just it really really does suck the uk has this too i imagine it does but i'm mostly speaking from my experience how much gabe isolates is up to him but the vast majority of far-right media presumes an alienation from the left. Part of conservative bloggers and YouTubers making the left look pathetic is doing a lot of takedowns and responses. This is a constant repetition of the left's arguments for the purpose of mockery. And for Gabe, it starts to replace any engagement with progressive media directly. He soon knows the left only through caricature. It also trains him, if he does directly engage, to approach the left with the same combative stance as his role models. For reference, see my comments section. And this yeah, yeah, pretty accurate. See down below too. Um, something else you can also look at is watch most debates that any left wing like debate bro streamer does with a random, like a random right winger they pull from the chat. Almost always you can tell this is somebody whose entire media consumption is right wing propaganda videos and it's almost always so bizarre or or in some cases it's almost uh enlightening or it brings like joy to your heart to see as the idea of a lefty that they've been taught is shattered right in front of them how many times have you witnessed that lefty goes on to i don't know vosh has streamed a debate and like goes in there clearly ready to debate somebody else because the idea of a leftist they have in their mind is a conservative's idea of a leftist a demonic, child-killing, blood-drinking monster. That, that's what the right pushes of the left, right? And so the second you're not a screaming harpy or, or, or judgmental or mean when you start talking, you shatter all their preconceived notions. They don't know what to do a lot of the time. The propagandists, the, the ones who know how to debate, they'll usually be able to get around it, but, like, the fans that are just victims of the propaganda, they don't know what to do when they realize what they've been taught. It was all fake. They lose, they just kind of fall apart. This is only if he doesn't partake in one of the many active boycotts of SJW media. In addition to mocking the left's arguments, they also, curiously, appropriate them. This is one part sanitization because liberal centrism is more socially acceptable. Indeed, many figures on the outer layers think of themselves as moderates even as they serve as gateways to radicalism. True. But also, many of Gabe's problems could be addressed by progressive leftism, so they sell him racist and sexist versions of it. Yes, there is a problem with workers being underpaid and overextended, but the solution isn't unions, it's deporting immigrants. Yes, there is a chronic loneliness and anger to being a man in the modern age, but it's not because of the toxic masculine expectations placed on you by the patriarchy, it's women being slutty. Yes, wealth disparity does mean a tiny percentage of- Remember, that's literally the point Vosh made like six months ago and got death threats for on Twitter. Elites have more influence over culture and politics than the rest of us combined, but the problem isn't capitalism, it's the Jews. And it's hard for Gabe to reject any of these ideas without, in the process, rejecting the progressive ideas they're copied from. The right's take the red pill is, to the untrained eye, similar to the left's get woke, or at least the bowdlerized version of get woke that is no longer specifically about race, which came to fashion once white people started saying it. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Take the red pill? Yeah, it's, it's bits like that where it's like, whew, let's hope a Gabe never stumbles across this video. 
You know, like this is a very good video for if you're already lefty and you're and you're just trying to like round out your education um, and, and your knowledge on this. But oh boy, is this video not made for games? Or reject them both. Either is a step to the right. As this rhetoric slips into his day-to-day -day conversation, even as seemingly harmless irreverence, it may strain relationships with people who are not entertained by this shit. Off-color comments about race and gender can certainly be wearying for female and non-white friends, which can lead to a passive distance or an eventual confrontation, which only seems to confirm what his reactionary community says about liberal snowflakes. If he says these things on social media, he may get his account suspended. And if he comes back under an alt, you can bet his new reactionary friends will be the first to reconnect, applaud the behavior that got him banned, and repeat should he get banned again. A few this is the repulsive uh, aspect of the left acting as a benefit to the right here, by the way. The left is not willing to take Gabe, who is now falling into the rabbit hole, and explain to him why what he believes is wrong, or to educate him at this point. At this point, he is seen as the enemy, and thus is to be regarded with nothing more than maybe a block, not even a report. Like, these lefties aren't even good at reporting right-wing accounts to get them banned. All they do is mass support left-wing accounts to get them banned, that they don't like. like could you imagine if the woke scolds who spend all their time mass reporting me or Vosh or whoever, like if they spent their time mass reporting Tucker Carlson's Twitter or Matt Walsh's Twitter or their YouTubes, maybe they wouldn't have platforms anymore. But no, they dedicate their attention and their energy to attacking other people on the left and basically shrinking that net that we could potentially use to catch the people who are falling into the alt-right rabbit hole. But no... No, we have to be morally pure and narcissistic and find woke ways of shitting on everyone else. <laughs> okay. Few cycles of this, and he's lost touch with everyone else. Tucker would never get banned. He has dark money protections. Yeah, Tucker's a bad example. He's too big. But, you know, like, libs of TikTok or whatever. Also, his adoption of the insular, meme-laden terminology of his community makes him less and less comprehensible to outsiders. Over time, sources of information get replaced with community-approved ones. Conservative news, conservative YouTube, conservative Wikipedia if he's really committed. The Christ. algorithm soon takes note and stops recommending media from the left. He stops watching shows with a liberal agenda, which... Oh, for those of you guys that don't know, shortly after this video came out, um, because of the Christchurch shooting and a lot of the media attention that had been brought to YouTube and its algorithm and its funneling of people to Nazism... Uh, YouTube was forced to overhaul their algorithm, ban a bunch of popular right-wing, like, Nazi channels, and uh, they had to basically overhaul the way that YouTube recommends certain types of political content. And they did a study, um, and it was a very popular study that happened after Gamergate and all of this shit happened, um, after YouTube changed their, their uh, algorithm. And it's used often to try to claim the alt-right rabbit hole never existed, but what it does prove is that YouTube changed... Uh, their algorithm. They also admitted to this, but it, it shows you how much of an impact it had. Um, this has changed. Around the in like the introduction of YouTube Shorts, the YouTube algorithm had a massive change. Right wing, even outright hate speech content, started to become not only acceptable and not punished by YouTube, but heavily monetized and and advertised by the algorithm. How often do you just open up shorts and after two scrolls, you've already got a clip of Andrew Tate talking about how bad women are? It, it really is a whole other universe on the YouTube shorts algorithm. And the normal YouTube algorithm has gotten almost as bad. The media attention has really kind of died down. Yeah, a lot of Nick Fuentes clips too. And Nick Fuentes is still banned from YouTube. The media attention on YouTube for hosting far-right content has heavily died down. Mainstream media just isn't really focusing on that right now, so YouTube's realized they are once again free to allow hate to thrive on their platform and to monetize it as heavily as possible before the next imminent and inevitable adpocalypse that this will cause. YouTube does not care about these adpocalypses. They survive them just fine. The creators are the ones who suffer, and the creators are the ones who... Because they want to be edgy and they love their free speech and they're so scared of that slippery slope, they are they will cheer as the events that will inevitably cause an adpocalypse occur, such as YouTube's loosening of uh, its rules on hate speech. Over time, sources of information get replaced with community-approved ones. Conservative news, conservative YouTube, conservative Wikipedia if he's really committed. The algorithm soon takes note and stops recommending media from the left. He stops watching shows with a liberal agenda, which usually means shows starring women and people of color. 
Now, there is evidence that the human mind responds to fictional characters similarly to real yep. people, and that consuming diverse media can decrease bigotry in ways roughly analogous to having a diverse group of friends, which is yep. one of many reasons we say representation matters. By consuming a homogenous media diet, Gabe stymies his ability to have even parasocial relationships with anyone who isn't a cishet conservative white dude or one of their approved exceptions. To the extent that any of this happens, it happens at Gabe's discretion and at his own chosen pace. It has not been forced on him, only encouraged and rewarded. To be fair, Chris Reagan was much more fresh off the off the right wing, uh, more right wing leaning content back then. So this was a much more timely reference. Bid. But the fact that it hasn't been forced can make him all the more willing to accept it because it seems safe to consider. Even though his life and social circle are changing to accommodate, he does not feel committed. But yep. many Gabes have walked these halls. He feels as though he's making the conscious choice on his own. Is this World of Warcraft? I think this is WoW. Um, he feels like he's making the conscious choice on his own uh, to disconnect from these people in his life. Halls. And if they close the door behind them, there is nowhere left to go but down. Step four, raise their power level. And they say we ruined anime. Consider the ecosystem of the alt-right as layers of an onion, with Gabe sitting at the edge and ready to traverse towards the center. No the alt-right is like an onion. I, I can't do the Shrek voice, but you, you guys get what I was doing. Oh, I'm not just going to reiterate the Pewdie pipeline, though if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. God, 2019 BreadTube was when BreadTube, if we, if, if, if left YouTube stayed like it was in 2019, things would be so fucking good right now online. Like the videos that lefty content creators are dropping, the Pewdie Pipeline video is fantastic. We might even react to that on stream one of these days. It was put out by non-compete. Back before non-compete sucked. I mean that you do. The outer layer of the onion is extremism at its most plausibly deniable. Without careful scrutiny, the public-facing figureheads could pass as dispassionate and the websites as merely problematic rather than softly fascist. It is valuable if Gabe believes this as well, that at this stage, he believes the bigotry is simply trolling, the extremists an insignificant minority, and any report of harassment faked. That he believes where he is is as deep as the rabbit hole. I, I cannot tell you how insane it is that the like the blatant doxing swatting and harassment that like the oh my god my nose will not stop that the og um like feminists i guess we'd call it like the og feminists would be the name that we'd give them uh like brianna Wu, uh uh anita sarkeesian um all of them like the amount of harassment and like doxing and swatting and just hate they were receiving given to any other content creator like for example i don't know like I'm trying to think of like a rant, like Markiplier. If Markiplier or just some random YouTuber got like MatPat or something got that much hate and harassment um, and swat, like there would be YouTube videos made by the largest content creators talking about how we need more attention being brought to swatting and, and harassment and internet stalking. But because it was part of a cultural movement of harassing and stalking and doxing these content creators, and then any time they report this is happening, saying they're lying, it, nobody was talking about it. Had this happened, these were large figures too. Had this happened to like any non-controversial political fig, non-political figure, all of the internet would be up in arms about some gaming YouTuber having this done to them. And that he continued to believe this at each successive Ugh. layer. People in the deepest crevices of the alt-right self-report getting red-pilled on multiple issues at different times in their journey to the center of the onion. If Gabe's first red pill is about the SJWs coming for his free speech, he'll think that's all anyone in his community believes. There's no real racism here, people are just making a point about their right to offend people. Then, when he gets red-pilled on the white genocide, he'll laugh at those alt-light cucks who tried to sweep the race realists under the rug, and at himself for having once been one, but Each successive layer of the alt-right rabbit hole, as I call it, um, you start to feel as though, oh, this is the end of it. I'm truly red-pilled now. There's nothing more than this, and everyone below me is like, you know, they're not red-pilled yet, but they're on their way. And then that just keeps happening over and over again the further you get. Oh, this is the real red pill. Knowledge that those channels and websites are still useful for onboarding people, so he won't denounce them. At the same time, nobody takes those manosphere betas seriously. And this process is reiterated with every pill swallowed. Gender essentialism, autogynephilia, birtherism, Sandy Hook truth, Pizzagate, QAnon if he's really out there. The heart of the onion is typically the Jewish question.
This was when QAnon was just starting, by the way. But these can happen in any order and in any number. But each layer sells itself as being finally the ultimate truth. Each denies the validity of the others. The layers ahead, they don't exist, and you are certainly not being directed towards them. They're just the fevered imaginations of overreacting liberals. While the people behind are asleep, where you are now awake. That's why they chose the red pill as their metaphor. Take it, and everything will be revealed. That's why it cozies up with conspiracism. But what's supposed to f <sighs> And now we've got Andrew Tate, who literally believes in simulation theory, and is pushing the idea that the world is a simulation, and that he is actively giving people the red pill to break them out of the simulation. The, 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 like, it went from being like a tongue-in-cheek reference to the Matrix to now literally people thinking they're in the Matrix. If that's, we've literally watched as the community, as the internet has gotten radicalized. Like someone like Andrew Tate would not have gotten as big as he did, as he is now, uh, or was uh, before prison, um, back in 2019 or 2020. The internet had a little bit more sense to it back then, but something that happened since 2019 and 2020 is that a shit ton of teenagers became internet age. Bunch of teenagers who were not online and did not have that journey and did not get exposed to any left-wing ideas, they are just now becoming edgy teenagers getting online in the, in, in the time when Andrew Tate is getting big. And they're getting on TikTok, and that's just how it happened. These Andrew Tate fans are people who did not get radicalized back during Gamergate because they weren't online during Gamergate, or at least not online in the same way as they are now. A lot of it's just young Zoomers, new, fresh meat being fed to the grinder that is the right-wing propaganda mill. Follow is that this knowledge help Gabe in some way, and it doesn't. Blaming immigrants doesn't actually fix the economy, and hating women doesn't make men less lonely. But having been alienated from everything outside the onion, once that sinks in, the only recourse on offer is to seek out the next pill. And yep. pills are easy to find. Those within the network have laissez-faire relationships, even if they on paper disavow one another. When they need a source or a guest host... God, it's absolutely wild that that this guy, the, the leader of the Proud Boys, or the founder of the Proud Boys, I should say, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Fuck. Uh, Gavin McInnes. It, it, that Gavin McInnes was platformed by Joe Rogan. Can we get the video of Gavin McInnes pissing in the cup? Should I play that? Nah, we don't want to get too stunlocked. For those who don't know, Gavin McInnes literally pisses in bottles and cups on air, like literally under the desk while doing a show and gets like blackout drunk and like screams obscenities and, and has meltdowns. It's like really funny if you guys haven't seen it. It's really, really funny. They aren't going to go to the left. They're going to feature each other. The left is the enemy. Their ideas are beneath consideration, and the only reason to engage them is for public humiliation. But you can interview a Western chauvinist, and that doesn't mean you're endorsing him. Just, you know, it's fine to hear him out. Nothing should be off limits in the marketplace of ideas. Besides, Nazis are apolitical. And because these folks keep showing up in each other's metadata, regardless of what they say, Google thinks there is definitely a relationship between the guy just asking questions and the guy denying the Holocaust. Gabe is softly exposed to many flavors of conservatism just slightly more radical than he is now, and is expected, at the very least, to not question their presence. This is an environment where de-radicalizing, listening to the left, would be sleeping with the enemy. But radicalizing yep. further? Eh, you do you, buddy. Gabe's emotional journey, however, exactly. is somewhat more complex. If you spend any time reading or watching reactionary media- This video is very good. I Hypers in chat, if you were always- left wing when you got political like you never had a conservative phase you never had a right wing chud phase hypers if you if you never had that era in your life i would this this segment is for you guys mostly obviously the people who went through this as well will feel heard by this but like it's mostly for you guys because it can be hard as someone who's always been progressive and knows what you know to, to ever really be able to empathize with someone who was once conservative. Like, how could someone ever, how could someone have the gall, the nerve, to believe such horrible things and then become progressive and then we're supposed to be okay with that? Like, I can understand where that, like, concern or where that, not concern, but that feeling of, why do you deserve any credit, you know, is like the kind of thought that might go through your head, sort of, to some degree, um, might be the feeling but it's important to recognize what 
leads people to those places. That they're not bad people. It's that bad people are taking advantage of good people and turning them into useful idiots that serve bad people, if that makes sense. And I think this video does a fantastic job of helping those that might not have gone through that path empathize. Yeah, you've probably noticed it's really fucking repetitive. It's a few thousand phrasings of the same handful of arguments. Like, there's only so many jokes about attack helicopters. Yep. But these people just crank out content, and most of it's derivative. The reason to pick one personality over another isn't because they say something different, but because they say it differently. Gabe just picks the affect it's delivered in. Repetition dulls the shock of the most egregious statements, making them appear normal and prepping him for more extreme ideas. Meanwhile, the arguments themselves? They're not... good? Like, BreadTube will never run out of shit to debunk. They are repetitive because they're not good. They're mantric. A good argument you only need to hear one time. If you can follow it, internalize it, and explain it to someone else, you yeah. know you've understood it. But a bad- That's not always the case, but yeah, I mean, if, if it's a good argument, if it's the truth, then you can explain it to somebody. They can have, like, they can understand it. And that understanding should hold up to scrutiny for the foreseeable future. Bad argument can't convince you on its own merits, so it will often rely on affect. This can be the snappy, thought-terminating cliché, or the long, winding diatribe that sounds really sensible while you're hearing it, but when someone asks you for the gist, you can only say, go watch these 17 videos and it'll all make sense. Both these approaches are largely devoid of content, but gosh, if they don't sound sure of themselves. And yep. that mode can be very persuasive, but it doesn't stick the way a coherent argument does. It needs to be repeated. The affect replenished. It's why they have to just pump out the same videos. They make the same points over and over and over and over and over and over again. Ah. Because the words matter less than the delivery. There needs to be a steady stream of confident voices saying, we've got this shit figured out and everyone else is stupid, or yep. Gabe's going to notice the flaws. They are not well hidden. And the catch-22 of returning to that stream over and over is that these communities are stressful even as they are calming. People afraid they will die virgins go- People want to be angry to blow off steam, and they go to online forums to do that, but all that does is feed into it more. You go online and you, try, you think you're going to be able to, you know, blow out steam and, 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 you know, let it all out. But all you're doing is penting up more and more things to be upset about. It, it's not healthy. It's very common with social media. And it's something the right thrives on. Go to forums with people who share and validate that fear and also say, yes, you will die a virgin. People afraid Syrians are coming to kill us all watch videos by people who share and validate that fear and also say, yes, Syrians are coming to kill us all. Others have already pointed out that rubbing your face in your worst anxieties is a form of digital self-harm. But I need you to understand that- You guys remember when Syrian refugees was like the big boogeyman the right was complaining about all the time? The right like has to change what boogeyman it's focusing on at any given time. Back then it was Syrian refugees. Right now it's trans people. Toxic recursion of it. Gabe is going to these communities to get upset. Every emotion is converted into anger because sadness, fear, and despair are paralyzing, but anger is motivating. Whatever yep. his problems, there's always someone he can scapegoat for them, and Gabe feels less helpless when he's pissed off. And so while he's topping up on reassurance- Hey, does this sound familiar to anything on the left, by the way? How many, how many woke scolds do you think are only engaging in the behavior they're engaging in? Because turning their fear and their sadness that they're experiencing about the state of things into anger at somebody else is the only- empowering thing they have so they go on twitter.com to make shit up about lefty streamers that's probably a lot of them during nonsense he's also topping up on stress and being cut off from everyone outside the network the only place he knows to go to release that stress is back to the place that gives it to him it's a feedback loop pulling him deeper and deeper on the promise that at some point relief will come it is a similar dynamic that keeps people in abusive relationships Yep. When someone in Gabe's community makes a racist joke, they are presenting Gabe with a choice between the human interaction of laughing with his friends and his societal responsibility not to be a fucking racist. Yes. This is a very good example. How often have you been in a situation where it feels as though you're speaking out 
to make a progressive point is going to doom you in a social interaction because it feels like, you know, you're you're going to be preachy or an asshole, right? It's very common. The right has done a very good job of making making being progressive embarrassing online. Very much like it was during Gamergate. And not laughing seems ridiculous. Everybody's friends here, no one's getting hurt. This is harmless. And so the irreverent race joke draws a line between the personal and the political and suggests that one can be safely prioritized over the other. One way to look at radicalization is being asked to stick with that seemingly innocuous decision as the stakes are raised incrementally. First with edgier humor, and then comments that are funny because they're shocking but you couldn't really call them jokes, and then funny comments that are also sincerely angry. But in each instance, since he laughed with his bros the last time, it stands to reason he should keep favoring the personal over some abstracted notion of politics. This yep. is why the progressive adage, the personal is political, is among the most threatening things you can say in these spaces. I'm not trying to make a slippery slope argument. Most of us who laughed at edgy jokes when we were teenagers didn't grow up to be Nazis. It is a slippery slope in the specific context of being in community with people trying to radicalize you. Gabe is a lonely white boy in need of friends, and laughing at a racist joke is personal, and not laughing is political. Staying in a community that has Nazis in it is personal, and leaving is political. The personal is what brings people together, and political drives them apart. I think this is where we're going to stop the video for now, because I really want you guys to go watch the full video on your own time. Whether you're watching live, I mean, you should stay for the rest of my stream. Uh, but it, like, if you like, after the fact, you should really go and watch this video. It's so good. It's called The Alt-Right Playbook, How to Radicalize a Normie by Innuendo Studios. I'm going to go ahead and drop a link in the chat. It is really good. And I want to give like a final statement on this, because I, I have an overarching point I want to get to. The personal is what brings people together, and the political drives them apart. There's a reason I wanted to stop in this point, because it's really the core of what the left fails to realize. The left, culturally, tends to take the position of the aggressor, going into a community, going towards a figure, and demanding that something change, which is political. They are the ones pushing politics at least seemingly pushing politics onto everybody who, who we need to get to care about leftist ideas, right? Or left, at least progressive ideas. While the right has a far more subtle way of doing this. They utilize the fact the left is doing this as, a, as weaponry. They use the left's actions against them. They love doing that. It's not hard, to be fair. Um, but then they just make things up, and they subtly sort of coerce, they coalesce these ideas into the culture, while the left almost tries to drive it into the culture like a nail with a hammer. Um, and it just doesn't work that way. You catch a lot more flies with honey than you catch with vinegar. Um, doesn't mean we need to be accepting of these right-wing propagandists, these fucking ghouls, these fucking monsters. And it doesn't mean you need to be nice to random Nazis on Twitter who are telling you you don't deserve to exist. But I do think that this knowledge alone will help you in ways you don't realize when it comes to advocating for left-wing ideas. That's all. I don't even think you'll realize the ways in which this knowledge will add context to your arguments and the ways that you argue and, and, and argue for, I should say, your progressive beliefs. Anyway, with all that said, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support, the likes, the comments, the donations. Um, and yeah, have a good one.